the neck a dog hit on this one scene or like a two to which I say on scene it's a neat and dicht a um, hi everyone, Zinsu. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Teresa Van Rishase. My upper tenana name is Dochit Nana. And I am currently in my own community of Beaver Creek, Yukon, Thates Anik. And I'm a member of the White River First Nation. Um, I don't know what else to say about myself. Uh, I think actually everyone on here probably knows me. <laughs> For those that may be watching this video later on, um, I am a freelance curator, um, visual artist, and I'm currently attending Concordia University. And I had the great privilege and honor to work with these three amazing co-curators uh, during Tether. And I'll pass the torch on to Heather von Steinhagen. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. Thank you, Mary. And oh my goodness, I'm so happy to see everybody here, friends and family. Um, I'm Heather Stein again. Heather Vaughn is my artist name. Uh, born and raised in Whitehorse, Yukon. My mom has roots um, in Cowessis, uh, uh, in Cow my mom is from Cowessis First Nation in Saskatchewan. Uh, and my dad is second generation German Canadian. Um, I'm a practicing artist, uh, but I also work part time for the Canadian Crafts Federation. Um, so it was such a joy to co curate uh, Tether with everyone. Um, yeah, thank you, Darcy. Um, Uvanga Atega Darcy. Um... I'm from Tuktoyaktuk Northwest Territories originally and currently residing in Jabuktuk or Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, I am a curator and um, visual artist mainly in painting um, and happy to be here and especially to for everyone to see this work even virtually and um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Leanne Inaras Dahl. Um, I'm an Inuk and settler. Um, I grew up in the South in Ontario. Uh, my family's from Nikimatulik and Pondinlet, Nunavut, um, but I'm currently based on the unceded territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil Waututh Nations, uh, Vancouver, um, where I'm completing my studies in fine arts. Um, my practice is based in like sculpture, textiles, and collage, uh, and I also work as an editor for the Inuit Art Quarterly. Um, so yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, so nice to see you all, or not, not yet, but hopefully if you turn your camera on later. <laughs> um, so to introduce you guys a little bit to Tether, um, so Tether, this exhibition, it brings together uh, over 50 artworks uh, from Northern Indigenous art artists whose work display the complex and inseparable bonds um, across diverse lands, waters, nations, and people. When we were first asked to put together this exhibition, um, it was to include artists from all across the North. So from Yukon to uh, Nunatsiavut, from Labrador, um, and then the rest of Inuit Nunangat, so Nunavik and Quebec, Northwest Territories and Nunavut. And when we were tasked with, with this, we were kind of wondering, you know, what, how, how to include all of this like amazing breadth and depth of incredible work. And uh, we kind of asked ourselves, well, what does it mean to be an indigenous person from the North? Um, and with that guiding question is how we came to the theme of Tether. Um, basically, we're thinking about uh, what connects us across these diverse regions, um, what connects us across these diverse lands, um, and what tethers us together. Um, we came to a few different themes um, with the exhibition kind of in trying to answer this like really huge question. Um, a few things we were thinking about, um, things like intergenerational knowledge transfer, um, land-based subsistence practices, travel culture, travel technology. Um, 
So when you enter the exhibition, uh, Mike, if you want to turn to the right for a second, we've got this amazing welcome piece. Uh, Heather, if you wanted to. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is a work by Violet Gatsby. Um, she actually just installed a large work in the law building, which is amazing. Um, and, and this uh, selection sort of came naturally as an entrance piece um, because Violet is local um, and, and uh, it really reminded us of, um, you know, just a, a nice greeting. Um, as well, uh, it actually really influenced the color of the wall. Um, but uh, yeah, we were happy to have this as a welcome piece just to, to open it up and bring people in. And then if you turn to the left and you walk into the gallery, you'll notice right away that there's a stretched hide. Um, and this is a hide done by Copper Caribou, who are two sisters, Montana and Delaney Prisniak. Um, they're also from Whitehorse and they um, really started learning, relearning how to tan hides um, as a response to having all of these hides that their late brother had in the freezer. So as a, a process of healing and even reconciliation and um, just relearning their roots, um, high tanning became a, 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 a process and a journey. Um, so Teresa had actually suggested that we commission them to bring um, a stretch hide into the space. And it works really well just to break up a very boxy, um, uh, you know, just a, a typical uh, gallery style. And I think what we really wanted to do is to indigenize the space as much as possible and having this hide in the center really um, kind of disrupted this large space in the center. Um, and uh, below this, like where Mike was showing us earlier, um, I, I think we kind of named this the language project, but on the recording we have uh, Shirley Adamson, who's actually on the call with us, um, Sean Smith and Ruth Carroll um, recording in their language. And we had asked them to describe tether, the word tether um, in their language. So um, yeah, each language speaker um, has about 15 minutes of them recording um, various ways of what tether might mean. Um, so, if, you know, it could, it could be really um, tethering a dog or, uh, you know, the act of tying and it, it uh, you know, it could relate to so many things. So uh, it, it was special to work with the language speakers and, and to just elaborate um, uh, on the theme of the word. Um, and I think if we go into the next room, we have some pieces to show off. Yes, the park, uh, Darcy. Hi, so this is um, a parka made by Agnes Nanovak Goose. Um, she is so, in, I'm in Ivaluk, and I think this part of like my um, inspiration and one of my biggest roots growing up was from from Agnes or Nanovak. And on the opening, my mom was giving a whole tour. So I'm going to try to. Um, right make sure I get all my notes correct um and for me um this was one of the pieces that I really wanted to um have in the gallery and I feel like um especially with uh the material especially so you could see that there's ground squirrel which is very very a meticulous process to hide and, and to to um, make into parkas and and you could see like the Delta braid trim on the sides that are very like um, just so many beautiful pieces, but all the intricate details of the Delta braid are like very specific to each family. And then you have the, the Amavok, which is the fur, the sunburst, and then, oh, and then all, everything is just so good. And then there's just so much detail and process and, and so much time with each of the 
of each of the pattern. And this is so another thing to keep in mind too is that this is all this is all handmade. This is like all furs. This is like maybe a step from a bias tape. That's the the red squiggly. But apart from that, this is all hand sewn. And this is all like material from the the ground squirrel to the wolverine. And then I think um and the white parts are like the the like um the caribou, I believe. And um, and one of those pieces too, I think um, that I was excited about and um, is the conversation piece between, um, so Agnes is, was formerly a Banksland. And so she married a goose and then this is a direct descendant right beside her in the freezer is the next, is the next piece beside it. So this is Kyle Alikak. And I think, so he, they are related. They're very distantly, like pretty closely related. And um, and I thought this was um, a good connection and conversation to have because it's dealing with Harvest. This is also another commissioned artist through um, the art incubator. And, and I think like with the, with the visuals and like seeing the process in this, um, and having all of the, having them side by side and having the visuals and the animation and like the, the carved or the boxed meat and just the, the like seeing the different stages of harvesting and like, um, but also um, the richness, I guess also, and seeing from the hide the like the actual food and then to like the material part and I think this is like a very great introduction and conversations to have with each piece that was really exciting and um and I think that was a very good fit for this for this room and it was also for this room also was like mostly like the um, and with Agnes's like work generally mostly does with like like her prints were mostly like illustrations of like uh, transformation and and it kind of echoes each piece in each room in this in this place but also like the matriarch matriarchal um, connections as well going into the second room um we have such like an incredible collection of uh inuit sculpture with um lots of hand-sewn uh hide accessories by Yukon artists. And so I thought it was really special to see these works together. I wanted to point out this little guy right here, which is I think one of the, one of the smallest pieces in the show. Um, this is a sculpture um, by uh, Thomas E. Kudluk uh, from Nunavik. And uh, you can see there's a man and he's looking through uh, a telescope. Um, his work is quite humorous. Um, on the side there inscribed, it actually says, uh, he is looking for a wife, but he is getting tired. <laughs> and so uh, I love these little insider jokes uh, where you know you have to know the language to uh, maybe get some more context into the, his work. Um, so this is one of my favorite pieces. And what was really cool is when we um, had installed it, um, Looking over into the corner here, we have this um, commissioned work by Takralik Partridge, who's also from Nunavik. And uh, this is a, a Mauti, um, like a woman's garment made out of Tyvek, which is like an insulation material. Um, and to me, just with the train and with like the white beads and the, the white color, it just, to me, almost looks like a bridal a Mauti. And so, I thought it was very cute that um, the Thomas E. sculpture is kind of looking in the direction of this bridal amouti, um, which the material is great just because like with insulation, it keeps you warm. I think about a baby being in the amouti and being warm and being protected and insulated. Um, 
this was one of the pieces that we installed, I think the day of the show, um, it came last minute and uh, it was, so it was really exciting to, to see it go up and to see everything kind of come together and all of these different connections that maybe we didn't intend um, when we were first planning the show, but, um, but happened once we were in the space. Frozen. Uh, I can tell you guys about a little bit about this piece. Uh, this is um, a work by Nancy Saunders or Niap, uh, who's also from Kujoak, uh, Nunavik, same as Takralik, the last artist. Um, a funny story about this collage work that includes pictures of her family uh, and her community um, with the, the red embroidery is uh, during the Arctic Art Summit, we actually had the opportunity to give the Governor General, um, Mary Simon, a tour. And during the tour, she was really drawn to this piece and uh, was pointing out, um, oh, I know this person, uh, this is her mom, this is their gr grandfather, um, just kind of, uh, yeah, taking her time and actually touching the piece too, which, uh, <laughs> was really sweet and honestly, I'd love to see. <laughs> um, but yeah, being able to to name um, all of the people in this work uh, was just yeah a really special moment for everybody. And then this is the beautiful painting by Jessica Winters. And this is a commission piece that she was able to do so like, it was like instant and then if you I wish you could see it in person but there's like these like with the blue and the veins you could really see the detail with the piece and just like the attention with the beads I don't know everything is like it's so good it's so great for like this painting especially with the two um pieces beside everything like you have the you have the hands you have the the making of the mitts or the prints beside it that give like a tactile like a tactile um, feel and this was like um, um, like a very special piece as well because it just I don't know I feel like it really literally ties in all the um, the material and like the like a more representational of like um, the of of um of making art making and seeing like um the in between of like actually making um the like each each um object okay so you won't be able to hear the audio and um you can't we can kind of see the subtitles um but i just wanted to quickly talk about this work uh by robbie dick who is Casca uh, from Ross River, Yukon. Um, I, it was quite interesting working with Robbie on this piece. Um, so I, I think Leanne mentioned at the very beginning, we had, um, we had different types of artists that we were working with. We had um, artwork that was coming straight from uh, collections. So we didn't really have a chance to meet a lot of those artists or work directly with them. We were kind of more working with the collection. Then we had uh, Heather Steinhagen just mentioned about, or no, sorry, I think it was Darcy. Somebody, somebody mentioned it. Uh, the incubator artists, uh, which was a whole separate group um, that was working directly with uh, some of the Arctic Art Summit uh, folks. And Robbie Dick was one of these artists. And so they were tasked with creating um, kind of like a like digital work. So Robbie did this video uh, that interviews two elders from his community. Um, and if you don't know this, um, but Ross River is one of three nations in the Yukon that do not have a signed land claim um, or modern day uh, treaty of any kind. And I'm actually one of uh, White River First Nation. My community is also one of those three that have not signed. So I really connect with this video. Um, it's voices that are often not heard. Um, so I was really attached to this video and I ended up working with Robbie quite a bit with getting the audio and just you know with the bad internet connection like I'm in Beaver Creek right now so if I freeze like that is the reality of 
our lives up here. Um, but, you know, even just sending this video from Ross took, I think, two days, um, basically to kind of send to us like digitally, uh, which is pretty amazing, but it arrived right on time. And it's beautiful work. And I believe he has the intention of expanding it. Um, it's kind of a shorter video about four minutes long. But uh, he said he had hours of footage. So if you have a chance uh, before Saturday, please come and come and view the view the work. These little uh, skidoos are tiny. They are so small. They fit in the palm of your hand, uh, probably size 18 beads um, for all those beaters that are listening right now. Um, these are made by Angela and Mary Code. So you might have heard of Angela's name before. Um, Angela uh, kind of raised by a, a very artsy family. Um, her dad is a filmmaker and um, yeah, Angela Code made this with her mom. Um, they started with this piece right there, Skoden. And it was kind of a little bit of a joke, you know, like in their family of they're gonna be these old style skidoos that they still use or snowmobiles. And they ended up incorporating phrases that kind of come from their community. So Naho comes directly from their community. Skoden's kind of a more general indigenous term that we tend to use, um, but they're beautiful works. And it was a great um, uh, collaboration that we were able to actually commission for uh, tethers. So these were created specifically for, for tether. Next, I wanted Mike to show us the babiche bag. So there's going to be two of them. Yep, this first one. Um, so this work, um, uh, we had, like we said, we were working with artists that were creating work right on the spot, boom, 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 for Tether. But we also had the opportunity of working with ancestor artists, uh, which are artists that are no longer living, um, that we don't actually have a specific name uh, to put. Uh, we don't know the name of the maker at this point. Um, these ancestor artists tended to come from collections. And this is one of the works uh, by an ancestor artist and it's a babiche bag. And there's actually a modern babiche bag on the other side made by, um, oh God, I forgot her name. Help. Help, Florence. Florence Moses. Moses, thank you. It's a neat. Um, sorry about that. You know, it's been a while. It's been a while. So this is a, a work Florence Moses made mm, probably like eight years ago or something like that. So it's a recent piece. There's quill work right on the top, as you can see, like that kind of uh, northern lights colors, the blue and the red and purpley kind of colors. Um, but Florence had looked at older babiche bags to create this new work. And I don't believe they saw this ancestor piece, but we wanted to, to put them um, kind of across from each other. So people had a chance of looking at a traditional babiche and a modern take on it. Uh, we call it babiche because it's kind of using uh, I don't like to call it sinew, but it's like um, it's like a thin strip of rawhide. Uh, I think sinew is a little bit different if you're talking about backstrap sinew and things like that. But it's basically a woven pattern, uh, very similar to like fish netting. Um, yeah. So we had some beautiful works and you can see on the right here, there's, um, I don't know if anyone else wants to speak towards it, but it's actually our oldest piece, this comb. How old is it again? Anybody remember? 500 years old, over, over 500 years old. Over 500 years old. So that's another ancestor piece. Uh, we don't know the, the actual maker. I can talk about this piece. Uh, this is by Pritzila Kashuna, um, very well-known, prolific, uh, you know, artist from King Ai or Cape Dorset, uh, part of like the first generation of artists to make work for the the Cape Dorset Co-op. Um, and so in a lot of her earlier drawings, uh, she they basically at the co-op uh, for some time, felt tip pens, uh, markers were made available to use and they made these like incredible bright colors that just really fit uh, Pitsilac's drawings, which were just like very uh, joyful and energetic. Um, and so this is one of those felt tip pen drawings, which were only available at the co-op for 
several years before they were taken away because they realized that it, they're not archival. The colors fade over time, they can transfer onto other sheets of paper. Um, and so we had first chosen this work um, from, I think it was the Canada Council Art Bank collection. And um, then we were told that, okay, all of these colors are quite faded. Um, do you still want to choose it? And so between the curators, we kind of had a discussion about uh, what our decision would be. And we pretty firmly came down on, yes, we definitely still want to exhibit this. You know, just because the colors have faded over time doesn't mean that it doesn't get to be taken out of storage and shown to everybody. Um, her work is really important and comes from a time of, uh, you know, of change. And um, we think that it still has a life and it still needs to be shown. And um, just, yeah, just because the colors faded doesn't mean it gets to hide away forever. <laughs> so we were really proud to be able to uh, to exhibit this work um, by Pitsy Lakashuna. On. I see that Janet Patterson has asked a question in chat and, and she asks, how much planning were you able to do before bringing all of the pieces together in the space and how much could you only do once you had all of the pieces together um, at the Art Center? Uh, we actually planned all of it, I would say, online um like uh, I mean all of the pieces at least um uh, we did know we did have um like a large selection of Yukon um permanent art collection knowing that it was a lot much shorter distance to travel if it needed to go back but overall we actually used a Miro board which is kind of like a drag and drop program um online um and lots of word documents and excel sheets um so i think the planning was super helpful um leanne did an amazing job at scaling all of the uh, low quality image pdfs and and so we were able to actually pay, place them physically in the space um so that way we knew like physically it was possible we knew it was going to be a lot of work um and I think the space is actually filled a lot more than we had anticipated, I, I think, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it, I think um, all the crates were here and we unloaded them and it all fit. <laughs> In two oh. weeks. Yeah. In two weeks, yeah. <laughs> give or take with everybody there officially. And I think crates came maybe about a month prior in between. Mm -hmm. And then so, yeah, not very, not very much, but I think even though we didn't have that much time, it was actually great because then we already had a full scale plan and a little, um, almost like a diorama, but on paper of like everything and a lot of what we planned kind of stayed, but also not really. I want to add to that and go like answer a little bit of Courtney's question as well, which is uh, what was install like. Um, one of the things, so Heather and I were um, there before Darcy and Leanne, um, and we were able to open those crates. And uh, we didn't realize that um, some of the sizes that the collections gave to us were the print sizes not the frame sizes, which was probably one of the bigger shocks um, when we were unloading because uh, the prints we had, you know, some of them we thought there would be four on a wall uh, and realized that, oh, oh, you know, only two or only three can actually fit. So there were things like that that kind of came up that um, we had to be in the moment to realize because preparing for it, you can do as much as you can but ultimately it, it comes down to actually physically seeing the work and handling it. Like a lot of these plinths, um, most of the work stayed in the same rooms uh, that we had planned, but they moved around on the plinths. Uh, we moved everything 
took time to kind of look at what are the best angles. Uh, we also were really, um, I think we're clever, uh, but we chose certain pieces to be in certain spots, just like Leanne pointed out with the little guy looking through the telescope at the, you know, Amauti dress, uh, or sorry, the Amauti just um, there, you know, like those kind of little things we, we definitely thought of, like we had time to think about these things. Um, and we also had from, we started in September of last year. Just to further answer uh, Courtney's question about what install was like. Yeah, like everyone else said, we did a, quite a, a bit of planning, um, but there were still things that, you know, connections that appeared once we were in the space. Um, I would also say um, just, you know, with the mail and the pandemic and everything, uh, there were definitely some pieces that were showing up kind of, you know, right up to the last minute. So, um, you know, our plans kind of constantly had to, to change and think about these different factors. And so uh, we became really attached to um, a lot of these like commissioned work, like when we, they would come in, we would all kind of celebrate. And um, is, so it's just, yeah, even, even better to see all of these works together uh, you know, the way it was supposed to be um, actually getting them here. It, it was, it was amazing. It was a really great feeling. And also just seeing them in person as opposed to seeing them online. Like when we were working with the collections um, during our planning process, we were often given like contact sheets, PDFs with very small thumbnails. And um, so we were, you know, very thoughtful in choosing works that had like regional representation and gender and age and you know work with our themes but quite a bit of times we were working with something quite small um, to look at visually and so seeing a lot of them in person and they were yeah sometimes bigger than we anticipated like the prints or that huge gabiche bag I didn't think it would be that big somehow um, seeing them all in person was just like a really wonderful um, and rewarding and beautiful experience. Yeah, with there being four of us, um, and some of us, this is like the first project we've worked on together. Um, when we were like initially doing selections, we had kind of made like a voting process. We wanted to make sure that we were all in consensus whenever we made a decision. Um, that was very important. And um, yeah, and then also once we were in the space, um, like I think Teresa or Heather mentioned, they were there um, at the gallery first before Darcy and I arrived. And, um, you know, we just made sure that we were all together before we made any decisions and we were all on the same page with everything. And um, I thought that was a really uh, special part of um, how we put the show together. So we had the opportunity to borrow from uh, the Yukon Permanent Art Collection, um, the Indigenous art collection at the at Cernac, um in Ottawa. Um, we were also able to borrow from the Prince of Wales Northern Heritage Center, which is where a lot of those ancestor pieces came from. Um, the Canada Council Art Bank, uh, Global Affairs Canada, their collection, and then the Winnipeg Art Gallery um, collection. A lot of it was. Um, from the government of Nunavut collection that's on loan um, to the Winnipeg Art Gallery. And then in addition to 10, I think it's 10 commissioned artists um, in the end, including um, quite a few of the digital incubator artists that was between Inuit Futures and then the Indigenous Green Office, um, the project that they did in Montreal where they were to digitize or make screen-based work. Awesome. I see we've got a question from uh, David Trick and Julie J. Um, yeah, what pieces or what types of art would you have liked to include it, um, but ultimately could not include? I can jump in on that one. Um, <laughs> So when you're working with collections, uh, they have an expectation of giving them a heads up of 
a certain amount of months. And there was at one point where we, I think it was at the Winnipeg Art Gallery, we went, we tried to go back to, um, and we tried to request more work because we were just in so in love with some of these pieces. And unfortunately they denied us uh, because it was too close to the exhibition date. Um, so that is something that uh, there are pieces that would have been actually added to this exhibition if we were able to. Um, that being said, this was plenty of work. Like if we actually had those additional pieces, it would feel pretty crowded. So kind of happy it just, you know, kind of panned out that way. But there was definitely some pieces that I, I still think about to this day from that, like from the Winnipeg Art Gallery that I'm like, oh man, I, I'm just gonna like, you know, mark it for a future thing. I know it exists and I would really like to have it in a, in a show someday. But that's the thing about, you know, being able to be a curator is we can think about these art pieces for future exhibitions as well, right? So that's just on, on my part. That was one thing that I was like, yeah, there's definitely a few pieces out there that would have been part of Tether. Maybe we can finish it off. I, I know we've already kind of looked at highlights and this is an impossible question to ask, but I'd love for each of you to tell us, you know, if you had to pick, you know, one, one favorite um, uh, from the show. I think for me, um, other than the Thomas C. sculpture I told you guys about, uh, there's a print, the image is used for a lot of the promotional material for the show. Uh, it's by Francoise uh, Okwaga, um, naming the children after grandmother. It's like a really colorful um, stencil print of this woman and she's kind of got this face like, <laughs> like <laughs> and I just, I love the colors. I love um, the, title with the the subject matter um there's a little bit of a you know a bit of a mystery to me uh where I just wonder what this grandmother is like um and uh I've been a, a long fan of her work she's from uh Baker Lake and so I think that for me is uh my favorite <laughs> Well, mine is the parka, but I feel torn with Mark's um, seal skin. Um, oh, I can't find a word for it right now, but the seal skin neck, neck, neck pillow. Neck pillow. Yes, thank you. The seal skin neck pillow. Um, it's just more versatile, I feel like. But, uh, but the parka is such a statement piece, but those are my top two. I don't think I could pick um, just for mostly the park of because has more sentimental for me and also it's like one of the artists where like I actually saw like someone make a living as an artist and I think that like really stuck with me uh for myself I hope I don't freeze again but um I really love the prints and the colorful drawings and I find like there's such a relationship even to the work that I do that was just like super inspiring to see in person and the the Shuvanai Shuna um triangle um is just such a gift to see in person I was so lucky to be able to write um about a different work but um I like the very colorful yellows and pinks and abstract and like people in ghosts and sheets like I loved, um, I just love those expressions and, and um, how it's even, uh, I, like how it's kind of echoed in my work as well. Um, and I think there's another tether collection, uh, tether connection. I think mine, I had to Google, like look it up again um, on our Google Drive, <laughs> um, is the thigh of caribou with bits of fat. I can't pronounce the artist's name, Matiusi. My T C E I took. Thank you. I knew Leanne would know. Um, yeah, I love that piece. I loved it when I first saw it in like the little tiny thumbnail. I loved it when we opened it up. It's just, it's one of my favorite pieces. Like the detail that uh, he was able to make in the stone. So it's made out of stone and antler. And it looks like a caribou thigh and just just the dimension that he was able to do. And I, I think it's a, such a creative way of um, uh, sculpting uh, a very 
uh, common image that we have in our home communities. So that's definitely my favorite piece. Awesome. Well, thank you each. Thank you all for, for joining us tonight.